Hi everyone. Hi, hi, hi and welcome to Saturday Noon live with Tara. Uh today we're actually going to be doing our usual chat. Uh and as you guys know, we are on uh Facebook on um uh, on uh on youtube and on uh, instagram uh, but the live is on instagram so the guest is going to be on instagram uh, on tara sharma saluja so i'm really uh, excited to be uh, to be doing a live with someone who's um, really really um, fantastic uh, we're going to be having an equestrian olympian uh, here with us who's also a mentor and trainer and coach so i'm going to let you guys start joining before i add him on and sorry as you guys know we're live on all platforms but the actual live with with imtu imtiaz will be here on instagram so i'm going to let him join in just a minute hi mane hi captain jack sparrow wow <laughs> hi manu hi everyone thanks for joining sorry sip of coffee Hi Rania on YouTube. So everyone on Facebook and YouTube do join uh Instagram which is Tara Sharma Saluja but there will also be an edited version on YouTube uh very soon. So thank you so much guys for joining and in about a second in about a minute I'm going to let uh Imtiaz on. Um so anybody who has questions please send them in and um I'm going to get started in just a minute. So I think let's let him come on live. Thank you everyone who's joined us. And after we uh, chat with uh, Imtiaz, as always, as you know, I go live with three people every Saturday. You know, live with Tara, so we'll uh, we'll say a quick hi to a couple more people. So I'm just gonna let Imtiaz on. Uh, Afreen, thank you so much. We are fine. Touchwood, I hope you are too. Uh, hi, seven one six nine. Hi, Rashmi. Hi, everyone who's joined. It's amazing having you all here, as always. Uh, hi, Man May. <laughs> hi, uh, Amitya. I just feel the love. Thanks everyone for joining and I'm now going to invite Imtiaz on um in just a sec. Bear with us for a second guys, just inviting Imtiaz onto the live. and here goes so imtiaz if you're on the live you just have to accept my invitation and you will pop up on the live uh hi imtiaz hi how are you hi. very well how are you <laughs> good good thank you um i have your book here and uh, i i i'm so sorry it was a few minutes delayed but i must tell you that our chats are very very informal and currently you are on a phone balanced on a stack of books on insta but there's also facebook and youtube happening on the side on my computer but the thing is they can't see you so i'm just giving them a peek of peek of peek of you but then what will happen is we'll edit it and it will also go on to youtube so anyone who asks me questions on insta on on youtube and facebook i'll be able to share them with you too and before we begin i must tell you and all our viewers that while we have some amazing questions we also sometimes get some random comments so just not not to kind of be too focused on that uh, because i don't like turning the the comments off so just so that um, you know you're cool with that um so how are you imtu i'm very well very well really looking forward to this chat same uh, here uh, and and before we get into even introducing you with all the aplomb that goes with it i have to ask you when i was doing a little bit of research considering i've known you since i was very little I'm very confused because I've always known you being called Imtu, but then I saw an interview where you were called Imti. So please so first. This, uh, very, very good question. So all my friends and family in India, they call me Imtu. Yeah. And all my all my uh, friends and people that know me overseas call me Imti. So uh, I literally know who you are when you wake up, how you dress. I know that that I was empty or empty. Okay, good. That's great to know because I was like, oh my god, did I go through my whole childhood like hearing this wrong? Because I was so sure it was empty. So, yeah. 
So we've got Imtiaz Anis here with us, everyone. Who, Im, Imtiaz Imtu uh, is an equestrian Olympian, and uh, he's a trainer, a mentor, and he has an amazing uh, riding school uh, by, on the beach, uh, which is called um, Seahorse Equestrian. So really, uh, did I get that right? Yes. 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 Equestrian yes. Training. So uh, there's loads to chat about, but I must tell you, I've known Imtiaz ever since I was quite little and I read the book and I just couldn't put it down. Uh, I have to tell you, it's, it's a really wonderfully easy read. And I say that because I'm not a very good reader. So frankly, if I'm honest, it takes me a while to get into a book and I need a book that I can... And I kept telling myself, is this because I know him and I there are so many characters that I, I know and I so identify with because I love riding too and I love horses as well but then I realized that it's actually way beyond that because it's a story as you've so rightly said of following your dreams and um, of inspiration and what it takes to follow your dreams so it's not so much just about riding and horses as it is about the journey of a sports person and of someone who knows what they want at a very young age so on that note we've got Imtiaz here with us yay <laughs> and and uh, to start with Imtia, so um, before we get into all everything about the book, how did you actually decide to write a book? How did it all come up? Did you kind of feel you were at a point that you wanted to share this story and you reached your, you know, how did how did the idea of the book happen? Right, uh, tell my story. No, I wouldn't say write a book. I mean, actually, it's really tell my story because I really feel. That it's, uh, it's and it was for the for, and the main reason to do so was really to inspire the, the younger generation to say you know live your dream yeah. you know a, a life is short you only have one life and go for it and I had as you, when you read the book I had more failures and success as so people might think how can you write a book when you have more failures and success but that's life it's, you do have a lot of failures but never to stop never to give up never give in just keep pushing through and you will achieve it. Absolutely. I think that's such amazing advice. And on the Tara Sharma show, which is the more formal show I do, we've had some sports people on. And what I've noticed is consistently they have that approach of never giving up. And um, I think that that's so meaningful to all of us, especially as young parents, to transfer to our kids of not being afraid of failure. Um, I remember in the book, I, I literally got really quite choked up when uh, you were so excited about the Asian Games the first time. And, uh, you know, we're, we're all excited. And then suddenly you open the paper to find your name not there. Um, so right. as much as one says you get through failure, what, is, what was it actually like at that time? Like, I'm sure you had feelings of wanting to give up. How did you get through that kind of thing? So I think the main thing is, uh, you know, whenever you go through a failure like that, it's all about the support team. That's why I keep telling everybody, uh, you know, that's what the book is about. It's that there's just amazing people that actually come together to achieve your goal, you know. Yeah. And uh, whenever I had, when I had that setback, the first thing, I mean, it was hard. hard I mean, I was totally crushed. Yeah. And uh, when I, I, I was talking to my parents, and the first thing, you know, they both asked me was, you know, what do you want? Yeah. And I said to represent India. They said, then get back on the saddle. You know, there was no choice. Yeah. You know, like if I even said, uh, you know, well, I'm not sure, or you know, and all they had said, you know, now you've already given it your best, you've done all the trials, you actually did get selected, you want, you are wearing the Indian blazer. I had the blazer to bring out the next day. So I know. You actually achieved your goal. Yeah. But they didn't say that. They said no. You haven't. You haven't. You know, for yeah. whatever reasons. I mean, I'm not, you know, even the book. I don't get into the reasons and the bureaucracy no. or, or the politics. That's life. Yeah. There's always going to be bureaucracy. There's always going to be politics. There's always going to be somebody who's some connection to get something and yeah. you got left out. Just, you know, just move on. Yeah, you no, know. and it was inspiring Go. because I, I read how you Raise actually went. You yeah. went to Tokyo and uh, they didn't let you in even to the 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 Olympic Village. I mean, the, so not the Olympic Village. I'm getting all uh, muddled up, but they didn't let you in, and I, I felt really, really quite heartbroken. But I'm so glad that um, what ran through your book as well was, as you mentioned, such amazing mentors and friends. Um, and I think that is something that we don't hear a lot of when it comes to sports people. We always hear of yes, parents supporting them. Uh, you know, and really being with them. Of course, we do. Actually, we do hear of mentors. But I read a lot about friends, which I found very interesting because uh, very often, you know, a sport which is kind of a solo sport, um, you become quite insular in terms of you're just focusing 
the, on that but i i was it was really heartening to see how a lot of your friends rallied around to help you even academically and do your notes and in sana uh, and i of course finding all these familiar names i suddenly met shazmin the other day and i said oh my god is shujat is that shuju <laughs> is that your grandfather who inspired you at sana so now going back in time i mean i am a young mom and i just can't picture a 12 year old going to boarding school and my husband was in doon so we've had this discussion and when you were crying on that train and when your lovely mom rashida aunty was running beside you on the platform i was like literally <laughs> getting teary so what was that like in tears how did you do that i know it it was heart wrenching but i don't know what it was heart wrenching for everybody it yeah. was heart wrenching for everybody so the whole family my mom and dad were crying out here my aunt crying out there everybody yeah. was upset yeah. was stuck with it you know they knew what was best for me that's you know, amazing they made a man out of me because yeah. you know you know we were i was a timid boy I was a strong tough boy, you know a strong fellow uh, i all i did was love horses i was a very studious uh you know so for them they felt that and you know we all from a privileged background you know yeah. we went to a good school things were you know done for us so they realized that they realized no otherwise we'd just be like the, i mean i hate to say it that way but then you know mama's boy you know so yeah. they said no we got to send him out even though it's going to hurt us even though we want him next to us it's good for him so they, that's the reason they sent me but then i met such amazing people at the school also you know like so many friends who helped me protect me And that's what the whole friendship, uh, you know. Till today, we're still very close friends. You know, this yeah. is now you know about thirty, forty years ago. You know, I and know. Uh, we're still extremely strong friends. And that's what life is about. It's a journey. Absolutely, and I mean, giving a shout out to our common first school, Bombay International. Uh, I think yeah. that that maybe you know that there is a. and you know there's a huge emphasis also there i think on following your dreams and being who you are and uh, maybe somewhere there was a little bit of that that happened but kudos to your parents for doing that because um, i know now as a parent i would find it very hard to as much as i know tough love and all that i i think it's it's a very big thing to be able to do uh, so i really you know i felt for all of you there and also it struck me that you i always knew that you were fantastic as a rider as a kid and i used to see you at the race course and i feel very very privileged that at one point uh, i had the honor of um, sharing your amazing amazing horse arizona and you know till today that's such a special time for me in my life and i i actually came third in the nationals and frankly now when i read the book and of course i knew then but maybe when i was a kid it didn't strike me it was all thanks to you and the horse and diana and the training and arizona being so amazing i think i just sat on him and it happened no, no, no. so no, it's all a team effort it's all a team effort but that was such a lovely and wonderful time you know that's the beauty boy we did it as friends you know even yeah. till today we can talk about it i mean you know 30 years this is it that we still you know yeah. like, uh, it's and, and the bond that we had through the through the horses Absolutely but what i was coming to also is that you must have been so exceptionally good if you were in boarding school and you still managed to keep up with the riding because i know for me for those few years when i was very obsessed with riding it was morning and evening morning and evening morning and evening and so how did you actually manage that because did you have any riding at sana or were you only doing the riding in the holidays and all the other sport when you went sana Yeah, when I was in Sana, I did. I played a lot of sports, so that way that really helped. So you kept your fitness going, and you, you know. Yeah. But riding, there was no riding. I think that's the reason I was sent to Sana was yeah. to get away from the horses a, a little bit because I was too obsessed by them. But when I came home, that's all I did, morning and evening. But again, you know, I could catch up because I had Diana. You know, yeah. She was all my coach. Yeah. Uh, I don't think the viewers know that because they haven't really brought the brought her into the story. But but she was an expat's wife that came to India and won. Most accomplished rider who actually just took a, a liking to me and was, became like a family member. Yeah. And Tara, she trained me from eleven to thirty to the Olympic Games. Wow. I mean, I don't think anybody has a trainer and a mentor who they met when they were eleven years old and actually see, was with them uh, at the Olympic Games. You know, that's so, amazing. There was never a misunderstanding during that time. There was never a hiccup. There was never any doubt in my mind. It, you know, it was blind faith because of the type of person she was. Yeah. And what's even more amazing, there was no exchange of money. You yeah, know, it was just from the goodness of her heart. That's amazing. She loved the family, loved India, and saw that determination and dedication. Be that I, I was never late for a, a lesson. I, you know, the lesson was six. I always tell people, I would, you know, even I was there five to six. I would have been late. I wow. was there well before, dressed, warmed up, and waiting for her. So you know, she's like, oh my god, this boy just doesn't, doesn't stop. He's you know, glutton for punishment. 
Wow, that's amazing. And that actually also comes to this whole question of when do you really know what you want to do in life? Because uh, I think, frankly, um, many people don't know till much, much, much later. And I think there are a few, few people maybe who really know at a young age. And it seems to me from the book that as you keep, you know, as you as you refer to the fact that from five and six, you were, you know, um, speaking your victory speeches at home and, you know, creating your, you know, your your imaginary world of uh, representing India. And so the fact that you knew that at such a young age is quite something because I know for me, although I loved riding, I, I, I always knew that that was a hobby and I, I wasn't looking. So the fact that you knew at that age and it took me a, t a while to figure out what I want to do. So um, do you think that for a sports person to really achieve and be and get to that level like the Olympics, do you think it's something you have to kind of be almost born with and know at such a young age? Or do you think it can also happen later in life? Um, no, it definitely can come later in life as well. But it depends upon your sport, especially in our sport, it could be a question. It can definitely come later because the sport, you know, you actually peak when you're 30 to 45. Oh. It's not like every other sport when you're 18 to 24, your career, you know, that's when you peak of your career. Yeah. Because the experience that you require in a question comes with years and years of riding, years and years of spending time with your horse and people. Yeah. But having said what you said, I think the discipline has to be instilled into kids at an early age. Yeah. I think that is important. They must know what resilience is. Like yeah. you, know, I, have a son, I have a son, you know, he's a yeah. 15 year old, he plays tennis, he plays football. You know, for me, when he said, when he says he's going to do something, I make sure that it's, it's done. Yeah. Absolutely. There's no, oh, today's raining, or today I'm tired, or today. Yeah. No, never excuse it. Yeah. You've committed yourself to something, whatever it is. Yeah. It could be in sport, could be in uh, art, could be in business, could be anything. See it through. Absolutely. Because once you start quitting, then it becomes, then you know you can. Yeah. It's not something that becomes the norm. But then you always think, you know, should I, should I not? I don't have that. Even yeah. since today, I'm 50 years old. Uh, I hate to say my age like that, but... Uh, By the way, I must tell you, although I knew you in childhood, I was much, much, much younger. <laughs> You're still much, much younger. I'm just telling, but, just but, clarifying uh, that. No, absolutely. But, I'm just you know, joking. Like, uh, you know, I still get up at 5.30 in the morning. I think the student has a lesson. I'm never late for a lesson. You know, I yeah. make it a point that I'm always five minutes earlier. I yeah. don't walk in and expect the student to be there. No, because you have to lead by example so that the children understand. The number one thing I always tell people is get up, make your bed, and show up. That's, That's amazing. Start. Yeah, yeah. Then you move to the rest of your activity, whatever your dream could be. Yeah. And if you don't have your dream or you haven't formed your calling, it's absolutely fine. Yeah. It will come. But absolutely. it's the way of life. Yeah, no, absolutely. And it's very impressive because I see again in the book how you often would wake up your mom and, you know, they would have had a late night. And and that's incredible because I know that, again, uh, from having been someone who's, uh, you know, ridden as a kid, um, when you really are excited about it, you just wake up. And it's interesting how you do it. Like our kids, our younger one is obsessed with football. So he never complains about the 6 a.m. football. And in fact, I think now with this lockdown, it's one of the things uh, they miss the most that we can't yes, do that kind of thing. Hard, very hard. And and in fact, riding I must say came back into my life because of the lockdown because I had completely stopped. I got very afraid after I stopped when I went to university and stuff. And I have this wonderful memory of you actually coming and giving me a beautiful photo of Arizona. And I had it on my wall when I went away <laughs> to school. And I went at 15, 16, so it was older than when you went. But um, yes. those bonds, coming to those bonds between um, human being and horse, you describe them so beautifully, right from Rajesh and, um, you know, Baggy and, of course, Arizona and, um, you know, all, all of them. Um, were they all very, very, very different? And uh, I would never ask you to pick a favorite because I don't think one could ever I'm do glad. that. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't. I would never expect that. But... Um, how I, I don't know like i understand when you have a horse for a long time and you get to know the horse like with arizona or rajesh but when you pick a lot which happens when you compete internationally and in these big tournaments from what i've seen you have two days to get used to the horse how do you do that i mean so, you know the whole thing is, is having these bond with horses you've got to spend time with them you've got to know them inside out you're in my question center right now in uh in our goal it's called the sea horse question training and it's all about not just a riding lesson you know, nowadays people, when you go anywhere, it's like any other sport. You go, you play your game and you come home. Yeah. For me, these kids, that happens in the morning. Then the rest of the day, it's about spending time with the animals. You know, whether we are medicating them, sometimes they need ice, sometimes they need porches, sometimes, you know, how much feed they're giving. I make my students do that. 
you know, yeah. we have staff, but I want the students to learn so that they understand how much we feed, when we feed, which horse we feed. Everything is custom for each horse. So once they really get to know their horses, they start bonding with them. So just like this book, uh, you know, how people say, how did the book come about? It was the horses. Because once I remember the because I never forget my name of my horses, all the stories around them came came about, you know. Even uh, Dari, it's quite, uh, quite silly. But even in my stables right now, I have a brass plaque for every horse. Every stable is dedicated to one of my horses. Wow. You know? So Rajesh has one, Arizona has one, like you said, Maggie, Kemp, and all my all of the national. Every horse is very, very special. So as you spend more and more time with them, you build up that relationship. And each horse takes you to a, a stage in your life. You know, yeah. it's a bit like when you drive your first car. You don't... You know, at 18, when you first get your license, you don't go sit in a, a, a road ride. You don't go sit in a sports car. You sit in a smaller car, you get comfortable. So every horse, like, you know, in our equestrian sport, it goes on star level. One star, two star, three star. So there was a one star horse that came into my life. Yeah. Then another horse took me to two star. Another horse took me to three star. So different, different uh, horses do different things in your life. And you build that bond with, between them. And each one is a little different, you know. Yeah. And the more you spend with them, uh, it's really, really special. It's, I, I just love it. Yeah, that's incredible. That's amazing. Now, what about fear? I mean, I again, I'm coming now as a as a parent. I have to say that when I in lockdown decided I want to go back and try and ride, I was amazed at how it all came back. And in a minute, I felt like I was 12 again. And, uh, you know, I literally it took me back to that. And I loved it. And I took our kids. But if I'm honest, deep, deep, deep down within, I didn't want them to love it as much as I do. Because <laughs> I was I was nervous, you know, and I, I was much more nervous for them because I guess when you have ridden, you also know what God forbid could happen. And Absolutely. somehow Absolutely. I remember as kids, even in Mahabreshwa or Mathiran, I would never like gallop in the polo ground without a hat for sure. But I had friends who had never ridden who would be so fearless because they perhaps didn't know the other side. Exactly. So my right. question is, what about fear? Because you seem fearless, but how... Were you ever scared? Were your parents scared? Uh, they must have been. Uh, uh, yes, definitely. And you know, competing at the international level, my sport, which I don't think of you viewers know, is called three-day eventing. So it's a totally different. It's not only the show jumping, only dressage. There's yeah. a cross, cross country race. Yeah. And that's a tough race. So you're, you're galloping uh, four to five kilometers at a very high speed, wow. uphill, downhill, big ditches, big jumps. You know, you showed it on your video as well yeah. uh, before the show. Amazing. Just to give them a little glimpse of what I actually Exhilarating. Do. So there's yeah. a lot of fear factor. Even in the morning of the show, you know, you're absolutely shaking, you're white, you're, you know, you're just scared. So the only thing to do, uh, believe is to keep yourself, for me, I keep myself extremely busy, you know. So I'm not thinking about it. Because the minute you sit down to think, you're like, no, I can't do this. This is, you know, I'm not going to get into that platform. But, you know, uh, you trust your animal, you practice. Uh, it's not something you're just going in in the cold. Uh, so those sort of things prepare you a little bit that you know, okay, anything can happen. Today you could be driving a car or a car accident can happen, you know. Yeah, but you, you always tell people that are, who are, who are uh, you know, when you're learning to drive, you give them as much experience as possible. You let them practice as much as possible. So the same thing with the horses. You know, be safe. Always wear a helmet. Wear the right shoes. You know, be in the right environment where it's closed, enclosed. Sometimes, you know, start small. You yeah. Know, uh, people start becoming the, you know, uh, of the <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then say, no, we can just go galloping. Then that's dangerous. Yeah. But if you manage it correctly, it's like anything in life. It's Absolutely. all about, you know, uh, taking each step as it comes. Absolutely. And... Uh, uh a very uh, sorry, a simple, very simple question. But you know, when we were kids, we didn't have those uh, life vests uh, that now the kids all wear. So, is that something you would recommend for everyone? Or definitely, you, I, so, I, I, no, I think it's it's all about safety. So, yeah. I think it's you know, if you can afford it, you can have it. Definitely, it's an extra jacket that you put on that yeah. really helps the horses because you know, if, if the chest is protected. Uh, so, I think it's always good. You know, I mean, it's like anything in life. You know, science has come in. Uh, things have changed. You know, if you look at even a race car driver, the helmets that they used to wear before and the helmets that they wear now have totally changed. So, yeah. therefore, you know, they've, they've realized how much safety is crash tests are being done. Same with equipment. You yeah. know, with tennis in the old days, they used to play wool brackets. Now they play with graphite brackets. So, everything has changed and can change with the time. You know, the technology is coming, new things are coming, and it's all about safety. So, yeah. you should stick with it. So, now come, coming to the Olympics. How did that happen? You've mentioned several people who inspired you and helped you, uh, even when it came to giving you horses to ride and uh, different jobs. And I know you had that wonderful experience in Australia. Um, and uh, so, so how did the Olympics happen? And it was a childhood dream. But tell us uh, a little bit about that whole journey. So, 
Uh, it's what the book is also about. So, <laughs> guys, the link will be in the bio. But it was quite interesting because, you know, uh, it was like such a pipe dream. You know, I didn't even have a horse. I never ridden at that level. Then when I got the horse, we were not, uh, he was not at that level. You know, most people buy a horse, it's already at least at that level and then they get the experience. You know, yeah. for us, we were both learning together. So that was a special part about it. You know, me and uh, Spring Invader getting that bond and going up to grades ourselves, uh, traveling around to all the, you know, national competitions in Australia. And yeah. uh, so it's very, very amazing. Fucking people, like the amount of coaches I had, I mentored. And it was amazing. Like at one stage in the book, as you talk about failure, like you talk about the Asian game, there was yeah. another time where you know one of my horses broke his leg, and I just started the whole Easy. Olympic bit, and yeah. I thought maybe this is a sign. No, we are very superstitious, you know. Obviously, now this is a sign that's come. Then now we do. It's not for us, and we should just come back home, you know. Yeah. And uh, at that time, like the angel came, you know, like so one of the uh, colleges that I had gone to, uh, you know, he was a senior senator. He was on the board, and his wife just. You know, makes a call to me just as a general call to say, uh, how are you and uh, how how is your training going? And I, just, and I just was, you know, about about to cry. I was so upset and I just, you know, put a heart on her to tell her this is what's happened. She's oh my God, I'm coming and picking you up. And she just came like four hours away, Wonderful. back in my bag and we went to her house and I lived with her for three years till the Olympics. Wow. So, you know, wow. it was these sort of stories and books about that the universe does come together. If you have, your, if your goal is true, and, and you're hard working, good. They could see that. I never slept in. I never said I'll do it tomorrow. Oh, it's raining today. I won't ride. No, 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 no. Never had a day off because I just could not take that. You know, yeah. I just said, no, I got to work as hard as I can and even harder uh, because my goal is a bit, you know, out of my comfort zone as well. Wow. And then, of course, the whole thing of actually dying and coming and, you know, having all those last minute uh, problems of actually, qual uh, you know, qualifying and then you have to be ranked in the world. So it was just a lots of things that really happened and then. You know, the whole, uh, it's like the whole universe came together and said, we're going to make it happen for you, Empty. And, uh, and it did. You know, I got the phone call from the Olympic Committee that you're in and uh, wow. you know, we'll see you at the Olympic Games. Wow, so amazing. And see you at the Olympic Games and what timing. Uh, I'm sure the book coming out now, of course, was perhaps, uh, again, some sign. And I'm sure it was uh, <laughs> done in that way. But the fact that Fuad Mirza, of course, is uh, yes. uh, right there right now. So what are the, what are your sort of, what would be your message to him? Or uh, I'm so sure. I think has done the right thing. You know, I mean, he's also a young boy, extremely talented. You know, he left also India four years ago. Very, very hard. Yeah. And, you know, people say after 21 years, but it's fantastic for our sport. And even more fantastic, I that yesterday he did the first phase of our, of our event, which is dress art, and he had a smashing test. Wow. So he's the top 10, which is unheard of. You know? Wow. So Huge boost for India, for Indian sports, mm -hmm. and, and I, I just you know just keeping my fingers crossed that it continues for day two and day three. Mm -hmm. Our sport is very unforgiving. It's not like every other sport. It's just like you know on that day how good you are. You have to maintain that performance for the next day and then the third day. So wow. um, he stays in, in good health uh, mentally and physically. His horse stays sound. And they go get that medal for us. Wow, it's so incredible, so fantastic. And I cannot talk about riding without mentioning the Amateur Riders Club. So for anyone out there who's watching and who wants to learn, their kids to learn, it's really the starting uh, the starting place, I think, for yes. everyone when it comes to whether one goes uh, hugely professional uh, like this or whether, you know, even and, and Imtiaz, of course, uh, is being very modest. But apart from his eventing and dressage and show jumping and uh, cross country and all that. He also um, at one point wanted to be a jockey, right? And won the gymkhanas, which I remember I was so petrified even to watch, No, let alone try and take part. I was petrified. So you really have to have like huge amount of skill and, and guts to be able to do all that. Uh, but it all starts at the ARC. And I, so again, you know, it's so interesting because one watches, one sees how different kids it just shows how everybody is so different, right? So even if you're having similar experiences, what you're feeling within can be so different. And I think what's wonderful about riding is it allows everyone to figure themselves out and whether they want to do it in just a, you know, just to enjoy sitting on a horse or whether I think at one point you even say about, you know, just feeling the wind and the, you know, cantering and feeling the speed. For some people, it's that. And for somebody else, it's about actually the skill and um so now talking about mentors you've mentioned diana and um i remember diana she was amazing and um of course the other mentors that came along uh, again i would never ask you to to pick one but do you think that um, 
that makes a huge difference too as in if you had not found the right teacher or the right person do you think that you would have gone seeking or do you think you might have i won't use the word given up but i guess what i'm trying to say is that as we talk more about sports which are not necessarily as mainstream there are people here who are writing i saw a comment saying how do you uh, how do you take part in the asian games i'm trying to find that comment now uh, but basically my question is that you're doing a lot now for the sport right to raise awareness and to ha- you have your riding school i guess deep down it's also with the view to let more people have an opportunity like this so what do you think we could do at a policy level at a more macro level level when it comes to india about promoting sport because you know i'm sure you saw the tweet uh, uh, just yesterday um you know mentioning something about the living conditions of some sports people and some of these things only come to light once they achieve right because then yes. suddenly they're in the yes. so what would you you want uh, you know at a more macro level when it comes to uh equestrian and all sport really uh what what do you think would be so something so i think you know uh, you, uh, uh there were quite an open any questions because it's quite a lot there but i think the main thing is that playing sports is not going down to your play uh, down to the building in your playground and playing football and cricket that's yeah. not sport yeah. uh we have to incorporate the college that they have to join a institution where discipline you know so they get up uh, at a specific time they reach there and they, the warm up is correct they actually play this sport whatever if they're good or bad has no meaning it's just that it just shows them that they have to do it every single day there are no days off yeah. and that's how life that's how life is when you get when you go to school what's the whole main idea of school is to dress up wear a uniform be neatly dressed and show up be on time there's a school bell you come late you know you get punished same thing with college same thing with life you yeah. know when you go to a business and you go to a meeting if you're young and intelligent you want to uh, move up the ranks be early be a, you know don't it's a meet at 7 o'clock don't come at 6:55 that's yeah. already being late yeah. so these are the things that sport teaches you at a very young age course is teaching even more because it's not only about you like i mentioned earlier like you know every other sport you can, like cricket and all you can put the ball into a kit uh, you know once you finish the game it all your equipment goes into a bag and you forget about it with courses when you have a good day when you have a bad day instead of brush it clean it groom it look after it so it builds character yeah. you know it's the only sport where men and women can compete together So I always say that just shows you that there's no strength involved, there's no stamina involved. It's tact, it's finesse, it's bond, it's caring. So you know, it's a wonderful sport for even though uh, 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 those who are not very sporty, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like you don't have to be a sporty build. So if you're not the fastest runner, you're not the best football goal. A question could be a lovely sport for them, you know? Yeah. Because it gives them gives them so much confidence that yeah. they're in control of their goal. So a lot of people it helps them even uh, outside just sport, you know, like. Uh, kids who are not uh, well in- introverts or they you know a little bit uh, you know uh, staying in their shell courses brings brings it out yeah you know because if they go to a sports field they get crushed because they won't be able to run that fast and yeah. they're not that strong while here it's on their own it's just them and their horse and they can still perform at a very good level yeah. so that's what i love about this sport Now Absolutely. coming to your policies and procedures i think as a just coming back they start them young at schools and colleges the culture Yeah. Not the sport. The sport has no meaning. We have to inculcate this the culture. Absolutely. That's true. The culture of sport has to be ingrained in kids uh, from a very young age. I totally agree and um you know I I myself as a family we're quite sporty and I think this whole lockdown again it's impossible to have a conversation uh, today without talking about the pandemic and this new world that we were in. and um, you know one of the things that i think i've i've thought about a lot is sports people especially youngsters who are training this has been such a difficult time because suddenly they right. all their all their training has gone upside down and i see it as i mentioned even with our own kids you know missing and we try and compensate and in fact i've become quite a good footballer because the four of us play in the garden because there there wasn't an option uh, you know right. uh, while it was a prop full lockdown um but but speaking of that what I I don't know what we could do in big city schools because uh, you know I think people who have access to clubs and stuff do that as much as possible. But I I, I totally agree, Amtiaz. I think it's a great point that we need to have a culture of sport. Sport can't just be a co-curricular activity. It has to be part of the main mainstream curriculum. And I think it's it's definitely so so so. so important so that's yeah, a really it's, great point you have so much of teamwork co-operation yeah. you know 
and things that are going to hold you in good stead to work together. You know, you cannot be selfish if you're in football. You cannot be selfish. They just and that's what even this book, the stories you'll get out of it is wow. It's about just being resilient. Absolutely. Absolutely, and this is what has been one of the reasons I do my show, the Tarash Sharma show, is because I found this. Whether it was talking to a Virat or a Mary Com or a Rohit Sharma or you, or uh, it's interesting how there's a common thread of what got them there and what they did to achieve that. And sport is always something that's so inspiring because most of the stories. Uh, I think people, kids especially relate and feel they can also do it because exactly, uh, yes. most, you know, it's it's as you say many times in the book, which I found very interesting, that talent is actually a small part of it. It's the hard work that's that's bigger. Always, and I think always. Diana said that to you, and I think that's something that's so um, it's so important to know because a lot of times you feel like, oh, I may not be as talented as someone else, but then if you put in the hard work, you just may achieve. Uh, you know, even more. So that's amazing. So I found this comment here where we have Surian saying, uh, "Imtia, sir, after completing nationals, how do I get to the Asian Games?" So that's a specific uh, question. If you want to say anything, that's Surian asking. Well, if you've already done the national level, it depends upon which sport. I don't, I'm not sure which sport. I'm, I'm presuming it's a question, but uh, whatever sport, if you are, if you have, look at the qualifying uh, requirements for the Asian Games. Selection procedures, what is required, and then figure out the best way to get that. Yeah. So whether and and what I would like to tell them is not to stay in its comfort zone. You know, get, go out, of the, go out of the comfort zone. So it's not only well the selection. Uh, you know, this is the the criteria, and now I'm going to get it done in my in my town or my city. No, he has to push himself. You know, whether it's going overseas, whether it's going out of his uh, uh, the country, wherever, whatever it takes, but to plan it. Because this is a big problem with our Indians. We don't have enough people to plan for them. You know, the athletes here do everything, which is where we lose out. No, yeah. there's a coach, and that's it. No, that's where people, the whole team comes together. You know, parents, mentor, coach, other people who've done it before, other Olympians, other Asian people, and bounce ideas through them so that you can get the best answer, best results. Absolutely, that's that's great advice. So, Surin, I hope you uh, that helped. Then we've got a lot of people here saying. uh wonderful hi uh of course a lot of uh funny comments as well some kisses being sent your way as, as well and uh, yeah so basically there's there's you know what i think is also really great to see is that um you know a lot of people don't know that much about equestrian and horse riding and horses and i think um You did this twenty years ago, to twenty uh, one years ago. Now Fuad is doing it, and I think as there's more, um, you know, awareness, then more people will go and uh, uh, try out these new things. So please, for for those of you who've never ridden and have kids who want to try, do check it out. It's it's amazing. So Imtiaz, any imp, to any uh, final words to all our audience? Anything you um, about not just the book, but let your children live their dreams. And support them. It's not only allowing them to live it, but you have to support them. But create that environment. It's not just supporting. They say, "Ah, whatever you want to do, we are here." That is not not support. Yeah. You have to also make that environment for them to support them. You know, because that's what it is. Push your kids, children, out of their comfort zone. You know, only then they're going to be. Ex- Ordinary. We only live. Yeah. So make the most of it. You know. Absolutely. Uh, don't stop them. Don't make. It, you know. There are no excuses for the kids of the younger generation that's here. If you want something bad enough, you can get it. But as I said, and I can rightly how you said, hard work always beats talent. Hard work, work ethic. Up. You know, just like you said when you spoke to Virat, when you spoke to uh, or Mary Com and all these other athletes. The same will apply to when you speak to business people. They'll all have a common thread. The yeah. same will when you apply to you know creative people, whether they're artists, whether they're painters, whether they're chefs. It doesn't really matter. They'll all have a common thing. And the one thing common with everybody is work ethic. Absolutely, that's an amazing thing to see, and I think that's something we can all privilege or not or whatever. You, everyone can work hard. So that's an amazing thing to say. Another line that I read, uh, I, I I don't know if it was in your in the book or if it was in one of your interviews, where you said that successful people succeed at anything they do, and I thought that was actually a very good way of putting it because I think if you have that um, that 
you know, I remember my dad also used to say to me, once you choose to do something without being pushy, but be the best at it, not so much about competing necessarily with others, but even with yourself, do the best you can do at it or don't do it. So I do kind of think that, you know, I, I keep telling myself, I don't want to be a tiger mom. I don't want to be a pushy mom. (laughs) Um, I, you know, I, I've got already our kids are at that age where they don't want to tell me much and, you know, Rupa, they, yes. you know how it is. And uh, yes, I yes. realize that I it's also, good. Also, yeah, you know, thing. exactly. Yeah. How's your day? Good. Yeah. Yeah. You know? yeah. So you don't, you don't hear things unless some friend or somebody happens to tell you. Yes. So that I've now made, you know, I've understood that's how it works. But I have to admit. Uh, I do find myself sometimes saying that, look, life is tough. You have to work really hard. And um, and I, when before the kids were born, I always thought I'd be this very soft or, you know, do whatever you want. Don't worry, relax. But I actually feel like I'm not that person in the same way. Like, of course, I would never push them to do something they're not equipped to do. But I feel like if you see in your kids that they have some ability don't let them waste it. So I feel like that's something that as parents, Absolutely. you know, in today's world where I feel sometimes to be very honest, I love the system of follow your dreams and absolutely. But I also feel that sometimes people are very soft about it, that you don't have to yes. do. Don't worry. It's OK. Just relax. But life is tough, you know, and I do think that actually a little bit of. Don't you know, like you have to work hard. I think it starts quite young. Yeah, and I think and once it's in you. Right, they can still choose what they want. You're not yeah. telling them that what don't make them live your dream. Yeah. It, it should be there. It should still be their idea. They have to still wake up Absolutely. in the morning for it's all. Even with the equestrian part, uh, you know, I had a parent who came to the day and they never sat on a horse ever. And I'm thinking, why would you choose this? And you know what the answer was? We want to give our child every experience. How wonderful. Yeah, wonderful. You know, so, you know, that is itself is wonderful. Absolutely. And, and if like something that you're grateful that us don't love riding they like it but they're more obsessed with their football and cricket and deep down I'll be honest I'm quite enjoying that because then I get that time and I'm not worried or looking out for them <laughs> you know so I, I go back to being 15 and you know having that that experience so Imtu this was so fantastic amazing chatting and uh, be in my story swipe up after this chat and um, do get it and do spread the word 